This is such a crucial time in like the 18 to 25 year old age group from going to church with your parents every Sunday and maybe doing a devotional once or twice a week to um, figuring out who you are, owning who you are. I have never seen a generation so in need yeah, of friendship. So, in- so you're, you're essentially providing like a well through which they can drink. are people struggling to find groups of friends and real community it's just such a big change like you're like you're leaving your home you're leaving high school a lot of people are moving away um going to college getting all new friend groups and sometimes i think especially in college like people really struggle to find those friend groups because in high school you've grown up with these people your whole lives and you've known these people your whole lives you know their families but you're going to college and you're meeting these new people and it's such a struggle and this is such a crucial time in like the 18 to 25 year old like age group um you know you're going from going to church with your parents every sunday and maybe doing a devotional once or twice a week to um figuring out who you are on like by yourself yeah and like creating your religion and like owning who you are what do you both think the biggest factor in community is it like you are what you eat the friends you're hanging out with and there's shape i definitely think the people that you surround yourself with makes a huge difference on like your independence and also like your relationship with Christ. As young adults, we struggle with like independence and like moving out, like Lydia said, like going to college and learning how to like be alone, but also like we know that Christ is with us and like that he's guiding us. And so I feel like that's why it's really important to like have community because Mm -hmm. like when you're growing up and you're like learning how to be independent and like learn how to be okay with like it just being you and like Jesus yeah. like having that relationship. Yeah. How did you two find friendship? As cliche as this sounds, um, I started seeing her post on social media a lot about Jesus and yeah, it's how had, people communicate. Yeah, right now, social media is such a big, big thing in a lot like it is this it's this world and it's like turning into everything in our culture. And I think that um social media like i think it's such a great place to like reach out to people and you can evangelize on social media yeah, i've seen it done sure. and it gets a bad rap and i happen to be one of those people as much as i'm, I'm sitting here on a podcast that's going to go on the internet <laughs> there's a certain degree of self-awareness in this yeah. i think it's ironic right we're communicating through social media to tell them about real three-dimensional community right yeah. how ironic is that yeah. but we know that's the conduit through which they're going to hear it young adults it's just this the, like social anxiety that like you are going to go to these places and it's going to be so awkward and what, you're not going to know what to talk that? about and I mean, I feel like I kind of went through that like phase. I don't think I'm really in it anymore, but I think I went through a phase where I was scared. I was scared to like go and hang out with someone I hadn't hung out with in a while or like even at school and like, um, a crew, which is the Christian group on campus, um, invited me to go out to coffee. I was like nervous. I was like, what, what are we going to talk about? Like, I don't know anybody there. I think it's a lot of overthinking, something that a lot of our age group struggles with. Yeah. Like some of my friends, I invited them to like C4 because they like are Christians, but they haven't like come to like church or like any of the community gatherings, which I think is such an important part. Oh, like, I don't want to be like intimidated when I go to church. And I was like, oh, well, it's not intimidating. Like they talk about like real world things and like how Jesus will help you. The biggest thing, that we're trying to do with Crossroads is um, create a space where people can feel comfortable no matter where you are with your faith. I think that that's a big thing. Um, oh, that's really good. Not, not being like uncomfortable to come and just not being feeling like you have to talk and feeling like you have to be voicing what you think about something that you probably might not even know much right. about. The person that's watching this video, what is their apprehension? Mm-hmm. Is it like are these people in a cult? Are they going to get together and do some weird stuff? <laughs> like, you know what no. I mean? Are they going to like, no, but I meant like, if you've never gone, yeah. I, I walk around, like I said, I walk around the street all the time. I talk to these people, this stuff, their perception of Christians is so hilarious. I know it's horrible. And I feel like it's hard. Like pe- a lot of people perceive Christians as like these like scary people that like worship this God that is like scary yeah. and that they have to do these things for right. our God. And yeah, it's the complete opposite. Wrong. This is such a free gift. And I think that that's kind of what we're both trying to spread is that like Jesus's love is completely free and I, you know a lot of times when my friends are asking me like when I would tell them oh my parents are starting this ministry at our church or continuing this ministry um they'd be like well what is what does that mean and I think that the best way to describe this is it's going to be a place where you can come and you're going to be comfortable and you know Christian community we want to do things with 
more than just church. We want to be able to like play games and, yeah. you know, just have a community. Have friendships. Yeah, have friendships, Christian friendships. And um, even for those people who maybe are unsure of their faith or their religion, we want them to kind of develop their faith in a, like a safe and comfortable yeah. place. Yeah. Um, so I kind of describe it more as like church for based around young adults. Um, but more than that, like it's going to be, it's somewhere where we can come and have community. And um, I think it's going to be great. A lot of people, when they like associate Christianity or like religion, they think of like rules. And I feel like a community event, it's like you see how positively like friendships are impacted and relationships by like Jesus. And I feel like when you go to those community events, you don't even realize that like sometimes like people may be spreading God's love to you and like you just go there for the community event and like that's where it actually happens like a lot I of my agree. friends who've had like their first encounters with Jesus like they said they were like at a C4 group or like a young yeah, adult thing, and they just went because Became like their neighbor went right yeah. Yeah. and then she was like oh like I never even believed and then all of a sudden she's like that was the night that I had an encounter with Jesus you pull your generation what are the problems identity mm-hmm. right self-worth who, where is your value? Yep. Who has a solution to all those problems? Jesus does. Yep. <laughs> so I think you guys could seriously see something wild. Like, yep. and I love that you're being obedient in this way. He'll fish and loaves this situation because I know he does. Mm-hmm. I, I have never seen a generation so in need yep. of friendship. So in need. I've never seen, I've never seen it in my lifetime. I've never seen people that need. So you're, you're essentially providing like a well through which they can yep. drink. I feel like so many of my friends, if they had someone, like if they had someone to show them how good a Christian community can be and that we're not just like rule followers and we're not just doing what we're told. We're the um, opposite think, of rule followers. Yeah, I think <laughs> right. I think that um, that's a big misconception. Like she was saying, like people think that faith is you have to wear a certain thing to church. You have to be perfect at church. You have to come, come looking perfect and um, follow all these rules because that's like they grew up in these traditional churches and not that that's wrong and not that no. you can't do that, but no. um, it's come as you are, like come it as totally you are. Is. If people just had one person in their lives and one person to show them that like God is so good because maybe their parents weren't Christians, but they, all these people are so much more open to the idea. And as I tell my friends more and more about you think this, they are open to the idea as more, as I tell my friends more, more and more friends where I think, Oh, Oh, they would never want to come to church. I just say one thing to them and they're like, Oh, I would definitely come with you. Like, Tell me when. And um, sometimes it's like harder and like sometimes you definitely have to like keep asking them and keep asking right. them. I have a right. couple groups of friends where I just have to keep telling them. And but they're open to the idea. And I think that a lot of Christians who are in the faith already and strong in their faith, they underestimate the amount of people that would come if you just said something. To yeah, them. I think and you're on to something. Yeah, we, just share we just need yeah. to be just a little bit more courageous. Right. Yeah, right. And right. I think that the more people I share it with, the more they're willing to come and they're willing to try it, even if they come once. And they're like, Hey, like I'm, it's I'm not, not yeah, it's not, I'm going to, I'm not going to come back. I'm, um, you know, you're letting God do the work, but yeah, because yeah. maybe they'll come back like uh, two months later. Yeah, like the story's not yeah. done. Yeah, their story's not done, and I think that there's so there's so many people that just we still have we still have love to spread from God, and there's just so many people that if you just shared one thing with them, they might come to church and they might say, Hey, I want to come with you, and I think that. Yeah, there's just, especially this summer, this summer was a big change for me. Um, I started definitely posting more on social media about my faith, which is something I didn't really do before. Which is a big deal for yeah. your generation, right? That's yeah. when you and stake your flag in the ground if you do it on social media. Everyone is so, so involved and consumed by social media that it's just such a good platform to start sharing it on. And I think I was nervous. I was nervous for everyone who followed me to see me spreading this and what they would think about me. And I started doing it more. And um, more of my friends started reaching out. I started spreading it more throughout the summer. And we ended up getting like a pretty large group of people to go to this church yeah. group that we went. And it's, it's far away, which is one of the, another main reason why um, I think Crossroads is going to be a big deal for this area. But um, yeah, a lot of those friends started coming and I would have never in a million years thought that some of those, some of my friends would have wanted to go to that and i think it's just amazing like one encounter one encounter, one encounter is ironic, all it takes ironic word yeah yes <laughs> yeah one encounter uh, did you two both grow up in faith um so i grew up catholic okay. um but my family was not very catholic my grandma was and then i kind of fell into a state where like i like i said i believed in god but i never knew what it was like to actually have a relationship with jesus and um it was kind of like a funny story but Um, like I ended up getting like, wanted to to get like a tattoo and it ended up being like something that one of my grandparents like said to me all the time. And it happened to be a Bible verse, which was, I live for you. And so then I was kind of like, why do I have this desire 
to want to get closer to Christ. And that's kind of where it all started. And I was like, you know, I need to live for Christ. Like, that's what I want to do. And I know that that's going to like bring me so much more positivity and like bring me out of my struggles and my hardships. And honestly, like that's what gave me a purpose. Like it gave me a reason to why I wanted to enjoy everything around me and like actually have a purpose to like have relationships and like live every single day. And I just feel like it was like such an amazing thing that I've never experienced before. And like, of course, everyone is going to have hardships. Like people say like, oh, you have like when you first turn to Christ, you have like the spiritual high. And then all of a sudden it yeah. like you get There's hit with truth. all these There's like. truth in that. Mm-hmm. You're attacked is what you are. Yeah. <laughs> that, and once you won't know what I meant, once your faith matures, you realize that's what happened to you. But yeah. Right. And then you're kind of like, oh, like, is Jesus really real? Like, why am I believing in this? And then like once you get through that, you kind of realize like, wow, it is way better on this side than it was before you turned to Jesus. And like I just learn so many like just little ways of how to appreciate life. And I feel like that's what I want to teach my friends. Like that's Mm -hmm. what I want to teach our young adults community because we have such a hard time like appreciating our life. We're so caught up with like our future and like what we want to do with our future, like our jobs, our careers. And it's like, you can take your time with that. Like Jesus has this whole plan for you. Oh, that's so wise. And like, you don't even need to worry about it. I like went to college and I was like, okay, like I don't want to just, forget about Jesus. Like I grew up going to church. I grew up doing this and I was like, kind of like, how do I, how do I change this into an individual faith more on going to church every Sunday? I think that I definitely developed that more in college. Um, but I don't think it was necessarily the same story as Katie's. I definitely had known Jesus all my life and I was going to my kids ministry and I would go every Sunday and I would learn about Jesus and I would go home and forget about it. Yeah, It was kind of that that routine and that pattern and it's like it wasn't some Jesus wasn't in my everyday life but it was something where I was like oh yeah I'm a Christian I got comfortable in saying I'm a Christian and it wasn't really when I I needed to start digging deeper for that like faith and I think that there's both sides like there's people who struggle where they don't have any background in Christianity and then there's people where they do they know Jesus but it's like they're comfortable in their faith they're comfortable saying they're a Christian and not doing anything about it they're comfortable very true saying they're a Christian, but not reading their Bibles. And I think that that was a big thing for me too. But I think another misconception, kind of what Katie was saying was, you know, Jesus can help you through your struggles. But a lot of people who aren't Christians, they think that um, Jesus should take it all away. You're never going to struggle. You're never going to go through hardships. You're never going to, you're never going to struggle. And that's a big misconception. You're going to go through hard things like in life, you're going to do, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Um, But Jesus makes it so much easier to he go goes, through. He's there and with you. Yeah, when he makes you go it so much it. more peaceful. And through those struggles, like you know that you have someone for you. And I think that that is such a big misconception is that people just think that you shouldn't be struggling because you're a Christian. You, yes, sh- you have God, so you shouldn't be struggling. And then agree. these Christians, they come and they they come and they want to be a Christian and then they start struggling. They're like, oh, well, this like you must not be real. Like I'm struggling right now. Some people say that. Like, why do God, like, why do bad things happen? If God is real, like, why do bad things happen? And I feel like I try to tell them, like, I used to not have an answer for that. But I feel like now I have to say, like, bad things happen because, like, that's when we put our trust in Jesus. And, like, that's where our stories come from. Mm -hmm. And, like, we spread our faith sometimes through our stories. And I feel like a lot of people will say, like, oh, how did you get through this? Or how did you get through this? Or how did you learn about Jesus if you didn't come from, from a family who grew up? with Jesus, you kind of explain to them like how he saved you and that inspires them. And that's also a part of like community and like why youth groups are important, like discussions and like stories and like all of that. And that's why reading the Bible is important too. Like you hear all the different stories from all these people's different point of view. And it's like, they all describe like the same thing. I mean, like they say, like the Bible has so many cross cross references, and like that's why it's so believable. Have you ever seen that chart? That cool yes. chart. That's yeah, a beautiful chart. They right? say it's so believable because it's like, how could it not be true if everyone had all these same experiences of like being saved and like just all these miraculous things happening? And I feel like that's why God allows things bad things to happen. And that's the power of a testimony. You're right. Most people meet Jesus. Not everyone. Most people meet Jesus when they're through with doing things their own way yeah that's not everybody's yeah. story mm-hmm. but it's a lot of people's yeah. just my story and i think a lot of people also find um god when they're at their lowest points they're broken and i think that i know there's so many bible verses about coming to jesus when you're broken and i think that that's another thing like all these bad things happen because you need to 
put your trust in Jesus. And yeah. I think that he lets bad things happen, like Katie said, because you're putting, you're going to put your trust yeah. in Jesus then more. And with relationships and dating, um, it's such like a big part of this, especially our age. Everyone's like, who am I going to marry? Who am I going to date? Like, what if this, this relationship isn't what I wanted or yeah. th- my friend is in a relationship and I'm not. It's like so much of that. It's and it, a like, lot consumes, of that. It consumes our age group. And I think a lot of us are consumed by that. But um, I think that this can just be something that, like you said, like these people aren't trying to hurt you. They're not trying. This is like a, no a, safe angle. Space, a safe space. And I think that honestly, like the Christian faith also shows people that it's not all about who you're going to marry and like uh, frees you from that tyranny. Yeah. yeah it, yes. uh, you know, it kind of, it takes you away from that and kind of pulls you out of that. Like you don't need someone right now. Like <laughs> you don't need, Jesus. yeah, you know, Jesus. Yes. And I think that like, we're all so consumed. I think you're going to make all those decisions yeah. differently anyway, once you know yeah, Jesus, right? Yeah. Right. And I think that this is so overlooked, like having community so and somewhere overlooked. to go is so overlooked. Like even in high school, like there was nowhere for me to even like go where we could have like good Christian community. A few days ago, I was like praying the day before and I was like, how do I share God's love? Like I want to learn how to like invite him to my friends, but like, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. And I was doing a Bible study, eating some breakfast and like Lydia randomly called me and like yeah, so she doesn't really normally yeah. call me, but yeah. the Sunday before I went back to school, um, I was in church with two of my friends and my parents were behind me. Um, and pastor Ted was talking about involvement in the church and I like turned around and as a joke to my dad I was like you should become a pastor like you should be a pastor and that was obviously a joke he has a full-time job but um I like turned back around and I just prayed because they had always been involved in church ministry and I was just like praying that they would feel called to get involved here and um a week later I let it go a week later um I was at school and my parents called me after Sunday we have this really great idea like we want to start um a young adults ministry at Encounter. And little did we all know, there was actually already a young adults ministry here. And the leaders of the young adults ministry had actually been praying for two new leaders to come forward and take it over. So I just think that that's such a cool story. Yeah, and like, it's just, cool it's story. God is so intentional. Crossroads is an, is, it's an answer to everyone's prayers. I think that a lot of people have been praying for something. My mom said that, um, someone had texted her about their, their granddaughter coming and she's doing something at the medical center for school. And she had, they had contacted the church looking for a young adults ministry, which is just crazy. Like that was like yesterday, what we're trying to create with the first opening night. Um, we're not even, it's not even going to be like a church service. We're going to watch the Eagles versus I think Rams. I'm pretty sure game. And there's going to be a bonfire and like a food truck and stuff. And I think that like, that is also like such a great idea that we came up with like my parents and I and Katie to create like the first night to be something fun and show like, yeah, show these people that you don't, you don't need to like, we just, we're looking for community and like friendship. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys got going on? Um, so it's November 24th and I think that's the opening night. We're just going to watch the Eagles versus Rams game, um, on a big screen, I believe. And then there's going to be a bonfire. Um, there's a food truck coming and the neighborly will be playing there. (laughs) 7 30 p.m and i just think it's going to be a really good time for everyone to like meet new people and just encourage like anybody that you know who maybe doesn't have anything to do that night or just like wants to get out and like you know talk to some people like Mm -hmm. enjoy a bonfire watch a game like just you know things that you might do in your house just come out and do it with other people yeah (laughs) yeah and i know um Everyone should be home for Thanksgiving break. That's, That's kind of true. what we were thinking. It's yeah. the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Um, so, yeah, just invite your friends and <laughs> yeah, just yeah. come and come and see what we're about. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm really proud of you for doing it. I think the Lord's going to bless it. I think um, I think you guys have. Um, I think you're almost you're called to do it. And, you know, I'm thinking about this building and I'm thinking about this church family and even some of the resources that the Lord's blessed us with. And um, if we can be like a beachfront to something like this, yeah, it has the potential to just do some mighty thing. I think the Lord will bless your obedience and you stepping out in faith and being excited and infectious about it. It's just great. Thank yeah, you. and make sure to follow us on Instagram. So yeah. You guys oh, yeah, we'll put that right here. I know that there's so many other people out there mm-hmm. looking for Christian community in this area and just something that everyone can be a part of. And like everywhere, there's so many colleges around here too, like LVC, E-Town, Penn State, right, Harrisburg. Right students at the medical center like everyone is just searching for an area like this so i think and that community just yeah just community and i think that this is just going to be great you guys are a delight thanks for hanging out thanks for having us